Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to session three of our series, Portraits in Courage, where we are looking at the story of Moses and the Israelites and the Exodus from Egypt uh, all the way up to the Promised Land. Now, this is not going to be a, a brief journey. And in fact, we're going to see as we go along through the whole series, not just in our small group studies, but on the Sunday morning messages, that it's going to take a number of years based on the attitude and the faith or the lack of faith that the Israelites experience when it comes time to enter that promised land. We're looking, though, at the, the question of courage and what it took and sometimes the lack of and what they had to kind of muster up in order to accomplish what they were setting out to do. This week, we want to kind of take a look at the issue uh, that that is required um, for us to, to have trust rather than to um, merely complain. You know, there, there is not much more irritating than to listen to people complain, to gripe, and to grumble. And it can be very motivationally discouraging. And it's one thing to hear, but sometimes we do it ourselves. We just complain. And, and what, so what is the opposite for us. What, are, what do we need to do when we're tempted to complain? Well, what we often need to do, particularly when it comes to the things of God, is learn how to trust Him rather than just start grumbling and complaining. So we're going we're gonna to pick up in our story in Exodus chapter 16, and we read this, that the whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On the 15th day of the second month, after they had come out of Egypt in the desert, the whole community, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. That's a lot of people that are grumbling and complaining against Moses and Aaron. And the Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and we ate all the food that we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Yeah, that, that was the issue, wasn't it? That, that's what Moses' plan was. Just bring them out there so they, they starve to death. Their need, their need in this moment was real. But their attitude was faithless. Their, their need for food, it was a real need. But their attitude was, was wrong. It, you know, they, they weren't mustering the faith to take a look at this. And, and so this is what Moses does. And the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them. And I will see whether they follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in. So this, this is what that test is. It's what's happening on the sixth day. And that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So here's that test. To trust that gathering up only what you needed for the day will be enough. To, to look at it there and go, hmm, there might not be any tomorrow, so well, maybe I'll, I'll get some more, some extra today. And then if for some reason what's there isn't there for me, I'll be okay. This, this is the essence of trusting God. It, it is about believing that God will provide what you need so that you don't have to take what you want out of fear. Think about that one line in the, in the Lord's Prayer where Jesus tells us to pray, give us today our daily bread. That, that phrase, our daily bread, that's a reference to this daily portion of manna that they're going to receive, enough for the day. And so that's our prayer. That's what we're called to pray is give us enough for today. Jesus often spoke, and in fact, he would go on in that Sermon on the Mountain, go on and say, you know, don't worry about tomorrow. Uh, focus on today. And so this, this line in the prayer is about trusting in what we need for today. And, and that's what the Israelites had to learn for themselves and what we need to learn even today, to trust God to provide for us. 
So we go on in, in the, the, the scripture. It says, so Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening, you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? So what are you saying? You're grumbling against us, but really you're grumbling against God. Moses also said, you will know it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You're not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Think about what Moses is saying here to the Israelites for just, just a second. You know, think about this. Then you will know that it's the Lord who brought you out. It's, it's interesting that they've, they've had all these experiences so far. What aren't they learning? What aren't they figuring out? What is going on? You see, when things are not going as you want them to or you expect them to, when the experience is less than what you desire, what do we do? We look for someone to blame. And it can be hard to blame an invisible God. So who do you blame? You blame his representatives or who you kind of see standing in the way. In this case, for the Israelites, it was Moses and Aaron. They, they don't see God. They see Moses and Aaron, so they complain against him. They grumble against them. And they're saying, it's really not us. It's God. And we're so, so they crumbled and then they grumbled some more. Now, it might be easy to think, well, their fears are, are very normal and rational. And they are. They are. But think about what they've seen up to this point. They saw the 10 plagues that decimated Egypt. They saw the, the Red Sea parting for them and then drowning Pharaoh's army. Why would God do all of that? only to let them starve in the desert. They have enough evidence to at least say, Moses, Aaron, our food is running low. We believe, though, that God has led us here for a purpose. We're trusting God to act in some way on our behalf. So, so what, is, what will God do? We're, we're, we're here. We're trusting. We, we're, we're just waiting to see what you do. That, that should have been their response. But that's not it. It's grumbling command. So what does God do? Well, we're told in verse 9 of 16, then Moses told Aaron, say to the Israelite community, come before the Lord for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. You tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. So what is God doing? What's he saying here? What does God do? He provides. They grumbled. They asked. They complained. And in his graciousness, God provides what they needed. And we read this. That evening, quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. But when the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. So first, first we have the quail coming in to provide the meat. And, and they're going to be able to you know, roast that, dry it, and have it so they have that meat. But then they have these flakes like frost on the ground floor. Now, do you see that? Do you hear that? The first, the first instance of Frosted Flakes. Bada boom. Dad joke. I get it. But let's go on. So when the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. That's what the word manna means. What is it? Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. And an omer was about three liters, or about nine to 14 cups, depending on your research source. Gather that up. And then the Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little, based on how many people were in the tent. And when they measured it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, 
No one is to keep any of it till morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning. They're thinking, you know, well, hang back, because what if there isn't? What if there isn't that daily portion of food tomorrow? See how that ties back into the Lord's Prayer? Give us our daily bread. So they're thinking, I don't know if it will be there. And thinking that is what? It is not trusting God to provide. But when they looked at it, it was full of maggots and it began to smell. And so Moses was angry with them. And what they found that each morning, everyone gathered as much as they needed. And when the sun grew hot, it melted away. Now on the sixth day, we're told, they gathered twice as much. Two omers for each person. And the leaders of the community came and reported this to Moses. And he said to them, this is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is to be a day of a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you want to bake, boil what you want to boil, save what is left and keep it until morning. So on this day, on this seventh day, because they weren't to do any work, they could gather twice as much, but only on that day. And it says they saved it until morning as Moses commanded, and it did not stink or get maggots in it. So those other six days, if they did that, uh, or five days, if they did that, it went bad. But on this one day, they got their extra, and it was, and it held over through the next day. Moses said, eat it today, because today is the Sabbath of the Lord. You will not find any of it on the ground today. Six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will not be any. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to get it. And here's again, here's again, people not trusting the Lord's word. And they went out again. Oh, let's go out some more. But it's not there. Then the Lord said to Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? Bear in mind the Lord has given you the Sabbath. You know, they were supposed to rest. They were supposed to sit and, and, and just stay in their, their, their homes, their tents in that area, not go out to try to gather. Some of them went out and gathered. It says, this is why on the sixth day he gives you bread for two days. Everyone is to stay where they are the seventh day. No one is to go out. So the people rested on the seventh day. Now, I want you to see here what we're getting. There are two things that God is providing for the people. One of them is the manna, the bread, their daily bread. The other thing is a new practice, the practice of a Sabbath, of resting, of giving them a time where they don't have to go out and work. And they are teach, he's teaching them something. And that's a lesson we still need to learn because there is oftentimes there's a lack of trust for us in our when we just keep going and we keep going and we keep working and we keep working and we keep doing and we keep doing because like, I won't have enough time and we'll get it all done. You know, there'll be something else. At some point, we have to learn to take a moment, take some time and rest. I want you to think about that just for a moment in your own life. Are you having trouble resting? Are you having trouble being still, being quiet? Are you having trouble taking a break? I think God would still want you to know, even though we don't keep the Friday through night through Saturday Sabbath, we still need time to relax, to take a break, break to, to meditate and to think on the things of God, to spend time with family. Now, here's a question we might ask you. How long was this manna provided? You know, was this, did this go on for a month, uh, a year? We're told that the Israelites ate manna 40 years until they finally came to the land that was settled. They ate manna until they reached the border of Canaan. Now, you might think they would have learned their lesson about looking to the Lord and trusting his provision when he provided when he provided the quail, provided the daily manna. But look at what happens next when we go into chapter 17. It says, The whole Israelite set out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? 
but the people were thirsty for water there and they grumbled against Moses. They said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? That's why they keep having this same thing, theme, you know, just going back to why did you lead us out of here as if they didn't follow. This is always somebody else's fault. Have you noticed that? Isn't that like us so many times? Then Moses cried out to the Lord. I love this. What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. Have you ever said that? <laughs> what am I to do with my family? What am I to do with these kids? You know, they're, they're driving me crazy. These people want to kill me. And the Lord answered Moses, Now you go out in front of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile. Go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Masahan Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? You see, once again, their need was very real, but it was their attitude. It was the lack of humility, lack of, okay, we're, we're thirsty. What is God's plan? We're looking for it. We're trusting that he's going to do something here. Now, it's easy for us to find fault with the Israelites. But how often do we doubt the Lord? Do we doubt that we'll have what we need tomorrow? How often do we do that? Think about that for a little bit. Discuss that tonight. We all get anxious and we get grumbly in our tummies with worry that the Lord has brought us this far only to abandon us. Our lesson needs to be trusting him, not only for today, but for tomorrow. You know, so often rather than pray, we complain. Rather than seek the Lord, we look to some other way to soothe our emotions. These are the moments that we need courage. Courage to trust the Lord, trusting him to provide, trusting him to lead us. I wanna ask you, is there a situation right now that has laid a choice before you? And you look at that choice, kind of two paths. And to go this way seems safer, it seems more logical, but you know it will take you further from the Lord's will. But then there's this other way, and, and you can see that it leads you to the Lord, toward His will, but it's got some scary spots on it. It may even have some spots you can't even see, you don't know what's going on. What would courage look like for you right now? As you look at those two paths, what does courage look like? How will it lead you? How would you guide you? How will it get you to trust in the Lord? Think about that. Talk about that as you have your discussion time tonight. Thanks for being a part of our series. Thanks for being a part of this study tonight.